Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to St Mary's Vicarage on this Tuesday, the 1st of September. Here we are into another month in this very, very interesting year of uh, 2020. Now, I hope you had a really good um, bank holiday weekend. We um, certainly did. Uh, it was lovely to see um, our, well, my oldest friend, Alex, um, who I've known since I was seven years old, his wife and our godchildren. It's lovely to catch up with them and see how they um, have been surviving lockdown. Um, my two, uh, our two godchildren are young teenage girls, so um, not easy um, for them being, you know, separated from friends and such like. And uh, my goddaughter, who's a very keen uh, in ho on horse riding, um, of course, she wasn't able to do that during lockdown, um, though uh, she was able to go and um, look after the horses, which was um, which was good. So it's lovely to catch up with old friends. And um, uh, of course, they have got the um, interesting challenge this week of the, the two girls are going back to school and the challenges and worries of, of that. And then, of course, yesterday uh, we had a lovely family um, day out, just Kate and the boys and I, and uh, we went for a lovely walk around Wareham, which um, normally I think would be fantastic, but the reeds, if you've ever done this, there's a wonderful circular walk you can do around Wareham that sort of um, takes you <coughs> from the top end of the high street and then eventually you come back and follow the river around. Um, but the reeds were so high, the reeds, the reeds there were so high, that um, you couldn't really see anything of the river. Um, but anyhow, it was a lovely walk. And um, we managed to sit on the uh, outside the uh, on the quay there and have a pint, which was very pleasant. Uh, it wasn't too busy. I was quite surprised for a bank holiday. And then after that, we decided to head into um, Swanage for a walk around there. Um, I was a bit worried that that was going to be absolutely heaving, but it but it wasn't. And maybe it was because the... Uh, the weather predictions were a bit wrong yesterday and, and it was uh, predicted that it was going to be overcast and such like so um, people who maybe would have traveled from further away didn't but um, yeah it wasn't uh, too busy at all um, uh, Swanage which is uh, great uh, and I bought a new uh, a new top uh, which I was going to wear this morning but I thought I'd better wash it even though it's come from a shop uh, one of those stripy Breton tops with long sleeves which I do have but unfortunately, I'm now um, uh, in the situation where um, uh, my children pinch my clothes. So I had one of these Breton tops and uh, um, unfortunately, uh, um, Alex pinched it. Um, so that was really the weekend and uh, we were able to sit on the beach there and enjoy that. Now, um, I do apologise for Sunday. Um, I am not sure what happened on Sunday. Um, I tested everything before the um, service began. I knew the microphones were working because there's a, <coughs> um, there's a little screen that tells you that it's picking up sound and the iPhone was picking up the sound as well because you get a little monitor on there. Um, but for some reason, the sound was not transmitted or it may have been blocked. I'm not quite sure um, what happened. Um, and I'm a little bit concerned this morning because I, I know I'm broadcasting live now, but um, I can't see whether anybody is watching this. So I do have a bit of a concern that um, something may have happened with Facebook and they, for some reason, are blocking <clears throat> our live um, broadcasts. Um, it might be because of cop they fear there's copyright infringement where we've sung hymns or something like that, um, or you can end up in a situation where for, for some reason uh, people decide to complain that your broadcast is propaganda or something. Who knows? Um, <clears throat> but um, that's the situation um, that, uh, that we're in. I, I, I just could not get to the bottom of why we had the images and not the sound. Um, and I retested everything um, after um, the service when I discovered that... Um... <coughs> oh, good morning, Stephen. <laughs> good, good. I'm hoping you can hear me and this is working because we had all sorts of problems, uh, all sorts of problems at the weekend. So I haven't been able to get to the bottom of what the problem was. And I think it, um, 
might have been <clears throat> it may have either been an issue with my iPhone that um, from time to time Facebook up update the settings and my phone on um, Saturday evening it did an upgrade so it did one of those automatic upgrades now that may have meant that the settings <clears throat> for using um, for using Facebook live may have changed and it may mean that there's a setting I need to do to turn the sound on and off um, and I will look at those settings in greater depth before we get to next Sunday and I may well do a um, one of my morning broadcasts from the church or outside this week if it's nice and sunny just to see and to make sure that um, Facebook Live is working. But I do apologise for um, <clears throat> for how all that went wrong. Thanks, Mary, loud and clear. Again, apologies to all of those who are watching at home. I haven't been able to work out what was wrong. All the tech, all the equipment seems to have been working. So I think it was either something to do with um, Facebook or some setting on my iPhone that has been upgraded or changed uh, but I will um, get this sorted and we'll do a bit of a test broadcast um, this week and see how it goes. Anyhow <clears throat> here we are at the beginning of September. Now I'll be honest with you that <coughs> normally when <coughs> excuse me normally when we get to this um, uh, this particular time of year this is a week I really don't like. I really don't like this week. And I'll tell you why I don't like this week. Um, because normally uh, I've had the joy of my whole family being um, at home. So the Kate has finished school in end of July. The boys have come back from college and uni. And we go through the summer as <clears throat> many other families um, do. And we spend a lot of time together. Uh, and that's great. Of course, yes, that has happened, but that's been happening since um, Easter. Um, but I always dread this week because um, what happens is, and what is happening this week is, of course, that um, Kate has gone back to school today, though I don't think the children are there today, but she's there with her colleagues getting things ready. Um, ben will go off to college this week, and on Saturday we will take um, Alex up to London to begin his... Um, musical theatre course at the Royal Academy of Music. So what happens is, is the the vicarage becomes eerily uh, quiet. Uh, and though that's good, good for a working environment, because I can concentrate and uh, get on with stuff, it does take me a bit of time to adjust to that. And I, I, I feel quite low sometimes. Um, I think it'll probably be worse next week when everybody is back, because Ben will be back at college Alex would have gone and Kate will be uh, teaching. Um, but I do feel quite low and it does take me a bit of time to adjust. So I was just thinking um, lots of us or lots of people and families um, who have uh, children at home and such like are going to go through this in the next um, few days and weeks. Uh, children that are going back to school today, um, parents will be getting uh, used to that. There will be new parents, first time parents sending their children to school. That's nerve wracking enough as it is. But on top of this, they've got all the worry about COVID and these other situations. We'll have <coughs> parents whose uh, youngsters will be going away to university for the first time. And um, uh, that's always very nerve wracking. I can remember that three odd years ago when Alex first went away. <clears throat> of course, we're nervous about him going to London, but we know now he's got three years under his belt of looking after himself and um, being at uni. So we're not so concerned about that. But of course, as well, we've got this added issue of of COVID and how that um, affects things. And I know teachers are nervous, too. I know Kate is um, she's got very mixed emotions in the sense that she's really, really looking forward to being able to doing face to face teaching again, actually working with children directly. But she's also very nervous about <clears throat> what the next few weeks and months will bring as we sail into what is really completely uncharted um, territory. So certainly over this uh, next couple of weeks, we let's hold all of these people <coughs> in our prayers. <clears throat> as they get used to schools going back in a different way of being a school because certainly what I've heard from Kate and other teachers I know that um, uh, it's going to be very very different from 
uh, what children were used to, those who went back to school, who, who are going back to school, those who are going for the first time, in a sense, one uh, blessing is that they really won't know any different because they wouldn't necessarily experience school in a different way. Though, of course, many of them would have been at nursery schools or kindergartens. But um, uh, there we go. So it's going to be an interesting <coughs> month. It's also um, going to be an interesting month for us as um uh, uh, churches um, and communities because we, we are still sort of sailing in unknown waters. Um, the COVID rate in the UK is slowly rising. It is creeping up um, slowly, but it is creeping up. There are clearly some hotspots um, in this country. The nearest to us, I believe, is Swindon, <coughs> which um, is quite a hotspot. Um, uh, so, so there's a lot of unknowns um, as to what is uh, happening. Uh, there's lots of changes that we've heard on the news this morning um, about um, workers who have been furloughed and how those payments are changing. So <coughs> the next month, next couple of months are going to be um, are going to be interesting ones, I think. Um, and for us as a church, well, we're, we're re-establishing a weekly pattern of worship in our churches, but it's just one service on a Sunday. And um, this coming Sunday, we will be having a Holy Communion um, down at Pentridge at uh, 10 o'clock. If the weather is like it is today, we will be outside, which means we can sing hymns and such like. If not, we will be inside and it will be a said um, service. The following Sunday, um, here at Handley, which I think is the 13th uh, thereabouts, so it's the same weekend as the Ride and Stride, um, <clears throat> we will be um, doing a church walk, I hope, a different way of worshipping. And I hope this is going to be popular with families and youngsters uh, in the sense that we will meet outside the church and we're going to sort of be mini pilgrims and we're going to walk somewhere, not very far, uh, but we're going to walk and worship on the way and when we get to the, the the place where we're going to go we will have an informal act of worship as well and i hope in a sense that this some of the younger families and young children will come along to this i appreciate that for people who have mobility issues <coughs> the walk isn't um the best thing um but i hope people realize as well that we really really must re-engage with our children and young families because our family worship and breakfast church all of that is not possible uh, with the current um, crisis and situation um, that we're in <clears throat> so we move into that and then we move into harvest festivals which again is an uh, unknown entity because we can't really celebrate them in, in church because we just couldn't get the numbers into the church and um, <clears throat> so we're looking at different venues i think uh, pentridge have found a venue that they're going to use and I'm trying to find a venue <clears throat> here in Handley, a barn or something like that, that is sort of semi-open, at least has a roof over it, but the sides might be open, where we can congregate to, to for harvest. Uh, and then of course we will move into October, November, December with all the other um, types of services that come up, um, All Souls Day, Remembrance Sunday, all of these things will have to be rethought. Um, and the, the, the tricky thing is that because the regulations are so fluid, they are very fluid, it's very difficult to plan, for example, for Remembrance Sunday now and say, well, we will do X, Y and Z. Because when we get to Remembrance Sunday, X, Y and Z may or may not be possible. So <clears throat> um, you're having to constantly plan in a huge degree of flexibility in what we are trying to do, um, which doesn't make things easy, particularly if you've got organisations involved. So, of course, we have the scouts here that are all involved, a lot of young people. Um, <clears throat> how are we going to deal with that? And there's issues about maintaining bubbles and such like. So there's a lot of challenges um, ahead. Um, part of me quite likes that. I like the unexpected and, and having to deal with new things. I, I hate it when you feel you're getting in a rut. But um, sometimes I do feel actually <laughs> it would be nice just to be able to, in a sense, know what we were doing, but then maybe develop and change things uh, in that way. So it will be an interesting, um, an interesting uh, month and a couple of months, uh, particularly as we monitor what happens 
uh, to the COVID rate um, as young people go back to school. And I'm hoping this week to make contact with um, Sixpenny Handley School and just look at how we can work with that relation <coughs> relationship between the church and the school. Um, because going in and doing an assembly for the whole school, as I've been used to in the past on a Wednesday morning, is just not going to be possible. So all interesting um, stuff. Now, I haven't heard, had any feedback about the uh, concert down in uh, Pentridge on Saturday. Uh, unfortunately, we weren't able to get to it. We were out all day with our um, our friends who were down with us and we were walking down on Studland uh, Bay and we didn't get back until uh, we're, uh, well gone past seven. Um, but I hope for those who went, um, it was an enjoyable um, event because I know uh, Hazel and the Penwood um, brass there, they put quite a lot of effort <coughs> into it. So looking um, at our reading this morning, I thought I'd read from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians rather than the gospel. The um, You get a very sort of, uh, <coughs> this time of year, they sort of just run through a whole gospel which means that you get several days where you just sort of get chunks of the gospel some of which are brilliant others which um just don't quite uh, hang um but the reading from corinthians this morning um <coughs> paul's first letter to the corinthians chapter 2 verses 10 to 16 um i thought was lovely so i'm just going to swap my glasses so i can see a bit better <coughs> The spirit reaches the depths of everything, even the depths of God. After all, the depths of man can only be known by his own spirit, not by any other man. And in the same way, the depths of God can only be known by the spirit of God. Now, instead of the spirit of the world, we have received the spirit that comes from God to teach us to understand the gifts that he has given us. Therefore, we teach not in the way in which philosophy is taught, but in the way that the spirit teaches us. We teach spiritual things spiritually. An unspiritual person is one who does not accept anything of the spirit of God. He sees it all as nonsense. It is beyond his understanding because it can only be understood by means of the spirit. <clears throat> A spiritual man, on the other hand, is able to judge the value of everything and his own value is not to be judged by other men. As scripture says, who can know the mind of the Lord and who can teach him? But we are those who have the mind of Christ. This is the word of the Lord. <clears throat> That's a very interesting reading and um, just a little bit of background to that. The, the Corinthians were great philosophers um, and uh, Paul has a little bit of an issue with them in the sense that um, uh, their religion was very heady in a sense, that they, they were wanting to um, turn early Christianity into a sort of a, another school of philosophy. Uh, and that's how they were thinking about it. <clears throat> and Paul, in essence, is sort of saying to them that they need to start feeling and thinking with their heart, not just their head. And then they also need to understand the charism of the Holy Spirit and that um, the Holy Spirit imparts to us um, knowledge in a sense that is not necessarily learned. Uh, and if you're a, in a sense a philosopher, <coughs> that's quite a difficult thing uh, to take on board. And even today, it can be quite a difficult thing to take on board. But um, <clears throat> it is something that with time and through developing one's uh, prayer and spiritual life, you can come to understand, but not necessarily explain, which is an interesting thing. And you have to learn to um, trust um, in the spirit. Now, <clears throat> um, I have found myself in um, many situations uh, during my time in ministry where, um, in a sense, that the, the Holy, I do believe the Holy Spirit has taken over, that I found myself in a place where I've been uh, ill prepared to deal or cope with the situation that um, is in front of me. It might be because it's the first time I've ever had to deal with it or something like that. Um, and also in a sense through uh, preaching, um, if one allows or uh, is open to the Holy Spirit, 
that's really important in preaching. Uh, and I remember <clears throat> I was very privileged to do a preaching course with um, Stephen Cottrell, who's now the um, Archbishop of York. <clears throat> and um, he belongs to the um, College of Preachers uh, in this country. And it was a very interesting course because we all turned up knowing we were going to write a sermon. And then in the introduction, he said, by the end of the day, you would have produced five sermons, <laughs> which was all a bit of a shock. <clears throat> Um, but it was a bit of a shock because at that point, most of us who were, did the course were very used to sort of um, spending a lot of time thinking and researching a shirt sermon and then physically typing it, a script out by hand so that you had maybe <coughs> four or five pages of text, which you would sort of read out <coughs> at a service. And... Um, Stephen said, well, that's all well and good. And it's certainly important to do the research. It's certainly important to think and to reflect and to pray uh, about what you're going to speak about on Sunday. But he said the problem with having a very hard and fast script, if you type a script out and you read it, is that it didn't allow room for the Holy Spirit to um, enter in. So what he taught us on this course was, in a sense, the importance of doing the research and the thought and the reflection over the week as it leads up to uh, a sermon. But then trying to get away from writing out a script um, and to maybe use um, bullet points or just a few notes to help keep us on track. And he said the beautiful thing about this is that then if we're open to the Holy Spirit, um, the, the Holy Spirit can sort of come in when we're preaching. <clears throat> we, we've got a bit of a roadmap, so we sort of stay on track, but it can allow the Holy Spirit in. And um, this was a huge, huge moment in my own um, uh, ministry. And it was a bit like um, bungee jumping. I don't know if any of you have done anything like that, or it's some sort of extreme sport that <clears throat> um, he got us all to sort of prepare a sermon. Obviously, we didn't have lots of time to to research, but then we had to stand up and deliver it without a written text in front of us with just some notes and such like. Uh, and it, it did feel a bit like, you know, standing on the edge of one of these bridges or something with an elastic band tied to your ankles and throwing yourself over the edge. And you had to put your trust in the elastic and the people who had tied you to it. But when we had all done it, we all found it, um, very invigorating and very freeing. Uh, and uh, he continued to work with us in that way. Now, that's not to say it's always right. But um, one of the things he said is that, that, that there's a danger in the church that we end up treating lectures as sermons. <clears throat> now, lectures very much have their place. And when you're delivering a lecture, it maybe is very important to have a written text in front of you or to have very, very accurate quotes from um, particular people, particularly if you're doing science or something like that. <clears throat> but Stephen Cottrell said, that's not how a sermon should be. It needs to come more from the heart than the head. And, um, and we need to allow the Holy Spirit in. So that was one example. And, and there's been many times when I've... Um, been preaching that I have genuinely felt that that um, in a sense the words that I felt I was going to say uh, that I had thought about seem to go out the window and something else comes in and almost um, speaks through you. <clears throat> I've also learned to trust the Holy Spirit in other things in, in prayer as well when I was first ordained and the tradition of saying the morning offices and things I found that um, randomly uh, people's names or faces would come into my mind and um, I remember talking to my uh, training incumbent who was a very wise um, priest and um, you know he said that's the promptings of the Holy Spirit <clears throat> and you need to learn to be able to understand them and act upon them and um, he said well next time that happens um, why don't you go and visit the person that um, who you've, whose names come up or give them a, a ring or something like that. And it was very, very interesting because over the course of my sort of two or three years as a curate, I got more tuned into this and learnt to trust it. And time and time again, 
it proved right that I would suddenly have a, a, a feeling in prayer, a thought of somebody randomly coming into my mind and um, I would make a point then of, of in the next day or so contacting them to see how things were. Uh, and, and normally there was a need there, there was a pastoral need. Um, so, and there's other examples I could give you, <coughs> but I think that's the importance of trusting the spirit. And what Paul is trying to get across here in his, to the Corinthians is in a sense that, yes, Christianity and faith, there is a philosophical side to it. There is a side of great thought and um, all of that. And yes, that is important, but you must not push out the spirit. We have to understand that through our relationship with God, through what Jesus invites us, is that we have this personal relationship with God. And through the Holy Spirit, God communes and speaks with us. And if we just make our faith an intellectual exercise, we're missing out on really what it's all about. So um, a very interesting reading. Uh, maybe we'll have a bit more from Corinthians um, uh, this week. <clears throat> so today I've got quite an interesting um, day. Uh, I'm not going to be very office bound today, which is great. I'm actually out and about, which I'm looking forward to. I haven't really done a lot of that um, either as an incumbent or with my rural field office. I've got to go to Blandford this morning uh, to see someone, which is great, and then this afternoon into Salisbury. So it's going to be great to actually be able to meet somebody and not sit in front of a screen uh, and have a sort of conversation via Zoom or whatever it is. So I'm quite looking forward to, um, to that, socially distance, of course, and all of that. Uh, and I've got to do a couple of jobs as well while I'm there. I've got to take all of Alex's dry cleaning uh, to Blamford as well while I'm up there to get that ready for this weekend. Anyhow, I hope you have a great day today. Uh, looks like it's a really gloriously sunny day, not too hot. So I hope you enjoy that. Please hold in your prayers all of our young people um, who are <coughs> going back to schools, colleges and universities and their, their teachers and parents who will be nervous um, at this time. So let us pray. Heavenly Father, as we begin this new month and we continue to sail into uncharted territory, we pray especially at this time, Lord, for our schools, colleges and universities, for all of the staff there. We pray for our young people and parents as the new academic year and school term begins. We pray, Lord, for the new challenges that we face as a result of this virus. And we pray, Lord, that you will guide and direct us through these difficult times. We give thanks, Lord, for the gift of your Holy Spirit that spirit that dwells within us. Help us, Lord, to learn to be open to its promptings and to trust it. Help us, Lord, to, through the gift of that spirit, to build our relationships with you. We ask your blessings on us this day and always. Amen. So thanks for being with me uh, this morning. Uh, do have a great day. Let's just finish with the grace. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen. <laughs>